But let's start off with this Javon Wim situation. I think that's uh, something that we definitely should be taking a, a good little quick look at because I have some thoughts about that situation here now. Uh, in the third quarter, and I, let me pull this uh, article up here that I have from uh, Bleach Report. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of it's kind of funny. You know, this guy got a two game suspension for a really, I mean, if I'm being 100% honest, he got a two game suspension for an unprovoked attack on another player. And I'll and I'll give you my 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 reasoning and my perspective on why I think it's an unprovoked uh situation, mainly because you know, there's a kind of unwritten rule in the NFL. I think a lot of people need to understand this. There's an unwritten rule in regards to retaliations uh, for transgressions <laughs> in the, during the course of a play. There's always uh, somewhat, uh, and there's an etiquette to this, right? So let me share this with you guys so you guys can see it. All right, here we go. So, <clears throat> All right, let's uh, take a quick look at this and I'll go through the article quickly. Then I'll give you guys my perspective, what I think about it, how I view these things when they happen. And any, you know, I might have a story to drop about, you know, my time as a player and when I had a situation like this. Uh, but it says here, NFL hearing officer James Thrash was deni has denied Javon Wims' appeal and upheld the Chicago Bears wide receivers two game suspension for punching New Orleans Saints safety C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Wims will be eligible to return November 29th against the Green Bay Packers. During the third quarter of Chicago's 26-23 overtime loss, Wims approached Gardner-Johnson and yanked at his mouthpiece. Then he punched Gardner-Johnson with his right hand, waited a moment, and punched him again. And you can see here, this is the, <laughs> this is kind of the, uh, the cap, the, the, the screenshots from that. According to the NFL, uh, Tom Pilicero, Wims contended that Gardner Johnson spit on him and ripped out his mouthpiece before the altercation. The veracity of the first claim remains unclear. Or veracity of the first cl claim remains unclear, but Michael David Smith of Pro Football Talk noted that television footage showed the two players exchange words early in the third quarter before Gardner Johnson snatched Wims' mouthpiece from his face mask. According to the Chicago Tribune. Wims will lose $88,226.66 by missing two games in addition to any money that might that he might have to pay out in fines. And I guarantee you, there will be fines. There's always a fine. If you get suspended, if you get arrested, if you get uh if you have any kind of personal fouls, you're getting a fine. That's how it works in the NFL. Uh, the 26-year-old has caught five passes for 35 yards and one touchdown through eight appearances in 2020. Ooh, man, you're not even a contributor on a level to do something like that in the course of a game and not really, you know, be in jeopardy of losing your job. You only have five passes. You've caught five passes all season. You don't even have the stripes to get in a fight on the field. He's very lucky. He's very lucky that he hasn't lost his job. I'll just say that. He's in his third season with the Bears, who selected him in the seventh. Oh, oh, oh my. You're a seventh round draft pick? Come on, man. You got to be smarter than that. You're a seventh round draft pick, and you think you can just go out on the field and get in a fight like the way you did? Like, it wasn't even like a tussle right there between the two of you. You just walked up and jaw jacked the dude because he snatched your mouthpiece, which they have 50 of on the sideline for you in boxes where they have extra mouthpiece for every player. Mouthpieces that are molded to your mouth like by dentists. By dentists. They have backups all over the place. Uh, but he's a seventh round pick in 2018. This dude, this is what we call can't get right. That's what I call guys like this. Can't 
get right. Because why? Because you got to understand something about this league. When you get into an argument, when you get into a situation with the player on the field, you have to handle it in the realm of football, right? So you have to handle it in the context of football. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I feel like a defensive lineman did some did some some baloney type stuff to me on the field during a play, and I and I and I really think that my that I have to retaliate against this guy, uh, you need to. Do something to him within the rules of the game during the play. That is where I get back players. I get them back, and you can't, you can't, you, you're never, you're never gonna be able to get a guy back with a punch. It's just not gonna happen. Even during the play, it's not going to happen. And I won't lie, originally I thought he must have snatched the dude's chain because he did like this and snatched. And I was like, oh, he snatched, he must have snatched some jewelry because. That's the only thing I could think of that would be hanging by your neck and, uh, you know, turn out to be his mouthpiece. But when, whenever I had a situation on the field and while I'm thinking on it, I've had situ. I've had, you know, I, I wasn't one, I wasn't a, I wasn't one for fighting on the field mainly because I don't have the energy for that. No offensive lineman generally uh, who's out there busting his ass during the course of a game has the energy for getting in a fight. This is something that receivers and defensive backs do because they have that energy. We don't. But if I ever felt like I was in a situation where, uh, you know, I was pissed off because of something the player did to me, I would just you know, I would just keep that, file that in my back pocket. And there's always certain kinds of plays where I know as an offensive lineman, I can set this guy up and finish him. And then I'll, I might say something after I finish him very briefly. But uh, you cannot expose yourself like this guy did on, a, on, a, on, on an island on, on the other side of the field and just go off. Like he actually had to consciously make that decision at that time. And you can tell if you're watching the the video clip that this guy, uh, that he really, he, he hesitated. He snatched his, he snatched him, uh, his mouthpiece and then he punched and then he hesitated and then he punched again. And I mean, that's just, that's, that's clearly, that's something that, you know, just shows me that he didn't, he wasn't, his heart wasn't in it. If his heart was in it, he would have done the deed. He would have acted like it was a running play. He would have blocked this guy for 30 yards and would have dumped him on his back and would have held him on his, on the ground with his hands down like receivers sometimes do as he's trying to get off the ground and just shove into his chest. That's how you get back at somebody for disrespecting you. You go about it in a more, uh, discreet manner, discreet manner. I know if I felt like a D lineman was grabbing on my Jersey too much and, 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 you know, referees, they can't see it that well. Sometimes they'll call it holding. Sometimes they won't. Uh, I would say, okay, you know what? Got it. We're running the back. I'm on the backside of a zone play. I'm going to get my backside arm under his, on the backside, a gap is in front of me. I'm going to get my backside arm under his armpit, and I'm going to squeeze and hold the hell out of him right up against his rib cage, so that the referee can't see that I'm holding him, and he really can't look like he's being held because he's. It's going to be too hard for him to escape. He's going to dislocate his shoulder if he tries to escape but it won't look like holding because as soon as he, you know, as soon as I feel his arm pulling against mine, I just release and he'll, and he'll fall because he's got to spin away from it. But Javon Wims, you know, 
he's he's not in the position financially. Two games is eighty eight thousand. That was one fifth of my game day check. That combined total when I was when I was playing in my second contract, eighty eight thousand was one fifth of my check. One fifth. So, you know, you're a second, you're a, or what a third year player. You're not making second contract money. You decide you're going to go out there, be a tough guy. Not only have you now lost two game checks and you're already halfway through the season, you've lost two game checks. You, uh, and you're going to get fined by the team or by the NFL or maybe both. So you'll lose two game checks, probably as the, probably as the, as the NFL's fine, then the team will fine you. And now you are more than likely, if you can make it through uh, the rest of the, of the season, you're probably going to get cut because you're not a major contributor, contributor. You're not a core player on the team. You're not a part of the core of the nucleus of players. Uh, so you are a, a completely expendable, uh, individual on the roster. So now you are, you're, you're literally, you literally have, have, have put your own livelihood in jeopardy. And that to me is one of the dumbest things as a young player you could ever do. So for all you young football players out there. There is something to be said about a player who, uh, who who understands how to how to restrain himself when he's frustrated because when you don't this is what you look like and it's everybody else's entertainment let's be let's be let's be upfront about that right now your entertainment for other people but your livelihood will be on the line just cuz you get released does not mean you will get picked up by another team it just depends on what they need so Javon Wims, I would call him the donkey of the day. I would call him the low cow of the week. Uh, and I would call him the, I would call him Mr. Can't get right uh, for, for just being the kind of, of idiot that he was in doing what he did. And I hope he's, I hope he's come out and apologize. I haven't seen anything that would, that would uh, lead me to believe otherwise, but uh you know, good luck to you, sir. 